Welcome to a slightly different episode of Petrol Poodle. If you're already a follower of the channel, you'll know that I just really exclusively do car reviews. But this is an instance where I'm going against what I normally do. I'm not a big modifier. And so for me to have even done this, I think speaks volumes as to why I think it's important to do. It's very tempting to go for the most fun modifications that come first and make your car even more exciting. But as you will see in the video, there is a, re a very strong reason why I decided to do this. and. The format's a little bit different as well because I filmed the body of this video three months ago now and you're about to see why I'm now interjecting here and adding a new intro to it. There's a few reasons for that. Okay, so first thing, it's actually slightly eerie watching this footage because here I was talking about the what ifs and you never think a crash is going to happen to you. Was it six days later that I was going to be involved in a car crash in this car with the roll bar installed? So it was actually very good timing. And one of those things that you, you yourself watching, you too assume a car crash is never gonna happen to you. Number two, we have the fact that I think, I didn't really give any viewer discretion or any warnings of uh, disturbing footage. The reason I installed this roll bar is because I witnessed a pretty horrible rollover uh, uh, back in 2019. So I've got the dash cam footage to that. No one's seriously injured, but just to give you a heads up, Oh, and the third reason was to give you a little bit of format to show you the time codes of what's going on. It's not going to be a how-to video. That's not me. I don't know how to install this thing, but I did get some shots of a professional sticking it in place. So I hope you enjoy this. It's a little bit different. Let me know what you think from this. And if you are new to the channel, go look at my actual reviews where I've put a million hours of effort into them. I hope you enjoy this slightly different episode on Petropool Day. Right, let's go. So normally, me getting out of bed at quarter past five in the morning signifies I'm going on holiday or maybe I have to shut the bed, but not today. I've got up this early today to drive a very, very long way to entrust a professional to fix what I believe is by far the biggest design flaw of the Mark III or 3.5 MX-5. For an otherwise very well designed car, very, very well thought out, what is this huge design flaw which I, I simply cannot believe left the factory as it did. Well, it's got to be these rollover bars, hasn't it? I just think they're an absolute joke. As a six foot driver, when I sit in the driver's seat, and I'll show you here, my head sits clear, probably, probably two, two to three inches clear of this roll bar. And I have my head about the same height as this. So. In a rollover, what good are these going to be? And yeah, obviously you're thinking, well, you know, rollovers don't really happen, do they? Like, it's, when, when was the last time you saw a rollover? So that was the eye-opener for me that, yeah, in 20 years of driving, you're probably not going to have a rollover. But when something does go wrong, within seconds, it can go scarily wrong. So therefore today, we're going to be fitting the GC Fabrications roll bar, which is considerably better. We're going to get these out. A little bit extra time and expense that I think is worth it. We're going to sew back in all the Bose amp, the interior trimmings, and make it look like nothing else has changed. stock one here designed to save your life in a in a roll it's more of a it's more of a glorified shelf for the ECUs with a little fashionable roll bar on top whereas this is what 
Exactly, and this is what's going to hopefully keep the top of my head intact. My absolute worst nightmare is looking at all these exposed plugs and things and wiring and having no idea what the hell I'm doing. Oh, that's clever. Oh, look at that. Cool. And that's what you don't get by just buying it online and yeah. doing it yourself. This you, it's, yeah. yeah, it requires a little bit of planning and thought. Yeah. It'll also be interesting when that's been dropped by an inch or two. Yeah, with the, that, that, will, that will probably give me more knee room if I do need to have my knees up a bit higher. Yeah. So that should also help. Just like there is, this is the hard top. So with the hard top, this is about as far back as you're going to get. Um, but with the soft top, the mechanism is not there. And so it will go just a little bit further back if you're someone like myself, who's at that kind of six foot mark and you're a little bit unsure if this will work for you. Um, one other thing, obviously, which I'm going to be showing later in this video, is we're going to be dropping the seats on some new brackets as well. So with those dropped a little bit, that should actually give a little bit more space to probably move the seat around and give me a little bit more knee room here. But this is this is fine at the moment. As you can see, you might be able to see there, or maybe I'll get another shot. The knees are quite close to the wheel here. But if I, if I sit back like that with my bum right in the right in the crevice, then I've got, got enough room to move around. So basically the same as how I always sit, but with more space for things to go wrong. Looking really smart, everything's back in. And over there, you basically would never know that there's been some aftermarket work here. And then, I think that looks relatively OEM really, it doesn't look too bad. Ugh. So this is now the combination of new, much higher roll bar, far better, consistent bar all the way across, not too little style hoops that so I don't think will make much difference. And it's the combination of having at least this seat dropped so far. You should be able to see the difference here, just that one and a half inches makes between these two. Uh, and this one I'm gonna drop by two and a half to three inches, I think, with the, with the other mount that we've got. So, here's the ultimate test. Where does my head sit in comparison to this puppy now? So, that's where I'd sit comfortably. The answer, considerably, considerably under here. That's much higher than it used to be. So a massive success. And the driving position feels much more natural. It always felt a little bit too high for me personally. So it's not disgustingly low, like you can't see over the wheel, but all in all, I've had a great success. And so now the conclusion. What's it been like to live with this for three months? What are your FAQs? What does it cost? And what are the negatives which I have experienced in my ownership? So let's start with what it's been like to live with it. Well, exactly the same. It feels great to drive. And the first thing that people are going to ask is, does it add much weight? And does it make the car stiffer? Because it's significantly chunkier than the previous one. Well, it's only five kilograms heavier than the standard Mazda roll bar. So in real terms, absolutely nothing. You'll never notice that weight. When I first got into the car, whether it's placebo effect or not, I believed that this drove better. I, I felt like it was more rigid and there was less kind of, well, there's not really any flex in this car anyway, but it certainly felt better to drive. Now, I only had six days on that setup to compare it to my previous setup with that bar. That's because I had that car crash, as I said before, and because they smashed into the wheels, the car, when it was fixed, was put back onto a standard Mazda alignment. I haven't gone back to that fast road setup. Now it's been a little bit too long since the initial setup. So I think it improves things like that. Now let's skip to the main thing here. Everyone's gonna to want to know what it costs to do. So the bar itself, as of when I bought it from GC Fabrications, for my model of car, which is the hard top NC, there's a few other available, 350 pounds plus delivery. Now, completely optional, but I would recommend it, is at least the driver's seat having the seat lowered. This gives you more head clearance if you are in the incident of a crash, 
but I've always believed that the MX-5 seats are actually slightly too high for a car this low. So 75 pounds up to 75 pounds for the passenger seat. That's because you can have it one inch, two and a half inches, whatever. And the thing I quickly will warn you about when you go to chassis performance is be sure to get the correct brackets for each seat. They're not the same. This is height adjustable, that's non-height adjustable. The leather ones and the cloth ones, they're different depths. So just be careful and do your homework on those. I think it's thoroughly worth it. Now, actual labor cost of doing this. Now it's gonna, de gonna differ depending on who, you, uh, who you're nearby. Uh, Phil Bruff, who I'm gonna stick his details in the description below, he is about an hour north of London from memory. So that might help you decide whether you go with him or not. Now, the straight fit for one of these with absolutely no trimmings, no crossbar, nothing else put in, more like if, you're, if you've got a little weekend toy or a track car, 192 pounds is what he wants for that. So if you want to add back in that crossbar and you want to then go for your bows and all this kind of that jazz uh, stuck back to that, that's going to be an additional 128 pounds. Final thing, like I've gone for here, which I'm really glad I did because it makes the car feel much more factory and less like some kind of stripped out track toy. The final bit, the plastic trimming, 144 additionally for that. If you want the time and the effort for dropping each seat, you're looking at, uh, I think he said 49 pounds for each one of those. So obviously it's gonna be down to what you want, what works for you, what your budget is, but I couldn't recommend enough getting this done. Oh, finally, that negative I spoke about. Now, it's, it's not the world changing, uh, as long as it's passes this MOT, which I've been told by a garage it should, these seat belts do not retract on their own anymore, which is really, really, really annoying because every time you go to get out of the car, they just sit there a complete saggy mess and they're in the way. So as you can see here, no effort required. I just have to, you just have to feed it back through every time. This has been silicon sprayed and cleaned, all that stuff, and they still don't really retract on their own. It's just one of those things, if you're kind of in the car and you lean forward to look at a traffic light, your seat belt stays flappy and then you have to manually tighten it yourself. So it makes me ask questions how safe that actually is, ironically. Um, and it does suggest that this bar works best with track cars because you can have aftermarket seats and proper harnesses anyway. So maybe that's on the cards for me in the future. I'm not sure. I kind of like the heated seats and the comfort uh, of these standard ones. But um, yeah, do let me know what you think of this video. It is a complete departure from my usual style. So honestly, if you haven't liked it that much, hit the dislike button that's fine. You know, it's good for me to see what people think. If you have liked it and you found it useful and it's been helpful towards a mod you've never thought about or helping you make that buying decision, please, please give it a like. I'd really appreciate that. And um, yeah, subscribe to the channel really for proper car reviews and not really so much this style of video. But yes, I'm wishing you all a happy, healthy year this year and um, take care. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.